As the maker of the People's Car, Volkswagen, like so many other manufacturers, had to transition to the maker of People's SUVs, and that transition really started back in 2017 with the introduction of these very successful three-row Atlas. Now, about three years ago, Volkswagen capitalized on the success of the Atlas with this model. This right here is the Atlas Cross Sport. And for 2024, it is getting its full series of changes, including new styling front and rear, an updated interior with new tech features, and an all-new powertrain underneath the hood. So today, we're out here in the Catskills Mountain area of upstate New York to drive the revised 2024 Atlas Cross Sport. And the big question I want to answer, if you guys are looking for a spacious midsize SUV and you don't necessarily need three rows, how does the all-new 2024 Atlas Cross Sport stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the revised styling for 2024, I wanna pop the hood and show you guys what's powering the Atlas Cross Sport. Now, when this vehicle initially launched, VW offered a choice of two engines, a two liter turbo four and a naturally aspirated VR6. Both have been discontinued, replaced by a single engine, the company's latest version of their two liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection four cylinder. VW says they've improved the internals by reducing the, fix, uh, the friction. They've also updated the injectors. They have a higher pressure now, and this vehicle now makes 269 horsepower 273 pound-feet of torque. That represents about a 34 horsepower increase over the old two liter turbo, but seven horsepower less than the VR6, but more torque technically than both of the engines. It all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission and four motion all-wheel drive is available as a $2,000 upcharge. Uh, the base versions will have front wheel drive. Fuel economy also improves to 1926 with front wheel drive, 1925 if you guys go for the all-wheel drive version here. Now in terms of the towing capacity, this will tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds, which is improved over the old two liter turbo four cylinder and as this car sits it weighs in at just under 4500 pounds but let's go ahead and close up the hood because I want to talk about the revised styling this year. Now, as you can see, this has the new corporate face of Volkswagen, and it also has their new lighting signature. First thing off, or first things first, the headlights. Full LED adaptive headlights are going to be standard even on the base SE trim. Volkswagen will offer this version in five different trims. This one here is the SEL Premium with the R-Line Sport Package. You can see you have LED low and high beams. These are the upgraded high-performance LEDs and you also have an LED daytime running light and turn signal. The coolest thing about the refresh, however, is this new light signature. You have a, a lighting bar here that connects the two headlights together and the Volkswagen logo also lights up. You can actually see it lit up slightly in this bright sunlight, but overall, it, at night, it definitely looks very distinctive, but I also see hints of like a Ford Expedition in the design. Let me know what you guys think of the styling in the comment section below. I like also the front fascia here with the chrome that you'll find here. Right now, VW doesn't offer like a black appearance package, which I suspect they'll do that later on. There's an R badge here that you'll find for the R line package. And then this color is also a new color this year. It's called Kingfisher Blue. I actually had a chance to first see this color on an RT on a 2023 RT on. It's one of my favorite blues, and I think it works really well on this vehicle. If you see an Atlas in this color, it's going to be a cross sport because you can't get the three row Atlas in this gorgeous Kingfisher blue metallic exterior. And I'm moving around the side profile. You can see this vehicle is a large SUV. It's a midsize SUV, but VW did shrink this by about 5.2 inches compared to the three row model. So at 195.5 inches long, it is definitely uh, on the larger end of the midsize category. And its wheelbase is also large, 117.3 inches long. It's got the same wheelbase as, and the same width as the three row, but the overall height has also been reduced by about 2.3 inches and we'll talk about that later on in the rear. Now, looking at the wheels, VW offers a choice between an 18 and 20 or this 21 inch wheel. You're gonna get this 21 inch wheel when you get the R-Line package, which is included on the SEL and up trims. You can see it's got like a black machine, uh, two-tone look to it, riding on a 265 by 45 with tire. You've got a 13.2 inch brake rotor at the front. It's about an inch smaller at the rear. You have an all independent suspension, but no air suspension and no adaptive dampers. And VW says this model here has around 6.3 inches of ground clearance. Now, in terms of the rest of the styling here, on the side, you can see there's a cross sport badge here. On the regular three row, you'll have an R-line badge on the top trim. These are also power folding with an integrated turn signal. A lot of chrome again along the belt line. You have a panoramic sunroof. You have these more aerodynamically slim roof rails compared to the taller ones that you'll find on the three row model. And then looking at this area here, this is where VW really changed up the styling compared to the three row. This has kind of like that tapered coupe-like look to it. Kind of reminds me again of an Audi Q8, which is a much more expensive looking or expensive priced vehicle. Now looking at the rear, you can see the taillight design has also been updated um, 
I do like the fact that we have that LED light bar, just like on the front. The VW emblem also here also lights up red. So it's a really distinctive look at night, especially with the light signature. There's an Atlas badge here, a lot of badging along the rear. However, there's one area that I don't like, and that's the, the exhaust system. You can see it's got a quad outlet exhaust, but it's actually fake. It's part of the bumper trim, and the actual real exhaust is tucked underneath the bumper there. Don't really like that, but at least this won't get dirty with exhaust soot, which is kind of something that you see with a lot of German branded vehicles. Now, in terms of the cargo area, this is where the Atlas Cross Sport also excels. Because it doesn't have that third row taking up space, it's also shorter, you get a little over 40 cubic feet of storage space back here. That pretty much matches the Honda Passport. You get significantly more in this vehicle versus the Ford Edge or the Toyota Venza, for example. Fold down the second row seats and it expands to just under 78 cubic feet of space. That's a reduction of around 20 compared to the three row Atlas, but again, it's still on the high side and this class of vehicle. Underneath here, you're gonna find a temporary spare tire as well with additional storage along with the tools necessary to change out the spare tire. So overall, if you need a, a midsize SUV with a big cargo area, the Atlas Cross Sport should make it to the top of your list. So moving to the interior of the revised 2024 Atlas Cross Sport. First of all, if you guys have been in some modern VW interiors, this is gonna feel very familiar, especially if you guys have been in the new ID4. But let me first get inside and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built on the same MQB architecture that also underpins something like a Volkswagen Golf. Now you can see this is the newest Volkswagen fob. They first introduced this on the ID4. I like this fob. It feels really heavy and sturdy. Uh, it feels well made. It also has buttons for remote start, lock and unlock, or, or the or power liftgate function and panic. If you have access to the Volkswagen CarNet app on your smartphone, you should also be able to ping this vehicle as well through your phone. Start stop button is right here by the shifter. It's an interesting rectangular shape. And then you can hear when you start it up. It has a traditional starter noise because this is not a mild hybrid or a hybrid vehicle, so it doesn't have that kind of electric electrification assist. But when you first start the vehicle up, you can see it makes a great first impression. First of all, I want to talk about the seats. This is the SEL Premium, so you have the Titan Black uh, leather, real leather seats with kind of like a blue underlay, which means you're going to find kind of blue in the actual perforation of the seats. It's unique to the Cross Sport along with this kind of silver contrast piping and stitching. It's a nice looking interior. I personally would probably go for a lighter color interior, which they do offer as part of an, an option if you guys want a lighter interior. The rest of the dashboard you can see has been completely redesigned with some new trim. They actually call this copper fiber. It's a fake, obviously, carbon fiber look aluminum trim, uh, but it definitely has a really cool texture. It looks sporty. Uh, versus the wood trim that I saw in the three row model. In terms of the materials, you can see soft touch dashboard material. I like the leather and soft touch padding here on the lower portion on the door panels. It's also soft touch uh, injection molded plastic, more of that copper fiber trim, silver accented door handle, padded where I'd rest my elbow, and then the window controls, one touch auto for all four, which again is a great feature to have. The steering wheel you can see has also been updated. It's a flat bottom wheel design. It's got the R, R badging on it because this is specific to the R line sport package. The, the steering wheel itself has a manual tilt and telescoping ability of paddles on the wheel. And I also really appreciate that the fact that VW didn't put their finicky touch controls here on the steering wheel. Instead, you have actual hard buttons along with, again, two digital displays. You have a 10.3 inch display here. That's standard even on the base version. And even the base version also has the 12 inch display that includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This infotainment system is now one of the larger in the segment. It's a huge upgrade versus the eight inch display that you got in the 2023 model. This downside, of course, is you now have VW's touch slider controls, which are a little finicky and they also don't illuminate up at night which is a, a problem area I wish VW had addressed with this refresh. Now you can see uh, a lot of piano black plastic. You're gonna find that on the dash and on the center console area. Um, the shifter you can see has gone completely electronic. Uh, so you basically just push this toggle up to go to reverse. You're gonna get a full 360 camera. This is only included on the SCL premium. It's, caught, it's got that perimeter scan. It also has automatic parallel parking. Kick it down to go into drive, push the P button to go into park. Um, and then you can see with the electronic shifter, VW has also redesigned the center console where you now have this like big storage area down here. You didn't have that before in the preview fresh model because it had a mechanical shifter, but by going electronic, they were able to utilize the extra space to give you more storage, which is great. Additional storage over here, uh, which is nice. You have a padded center console armrest. This doesn't adjust forward or anything, but you do open this up. You have a big USB-C charging port, which is great. And then Volkswagen says there's a total of around eight USB-C uh, charging ports, including one up here. If you guys are looking to add like an aftermarket dash cam, it's gonna be located right here at the perfect location where you wanna mount it. So this is kind of great product planning for VW for a lot of consumers who want all the latest uh, tech features. Now, in terms of uh, above me here, you can see there's a big panoramic sunroof, which you can kind of open and close a retractable shade. It also opens up completely if you guys want to actually let in the light 
or let in the fresh air, which is nice. Uh, you have LED map lighting. You have interchangeable ambient lighting in here. There's 30 different colors where you can actually change the backlight color of the um, infotainment system and of the instrument panel, which is nice. The glove compartment over here, you can see, is damped. Uh, it's not lined with felt, but it's a pretty good size. Overall, there's a ton of storage space in this vehicle, and it also has some great tech features. The Harman Kardon stereo also sounds pretty good. This is the only trim to get that Harman Kardon stereo, but unlike um, the pre-refresh model, all of the trims are gonna get heated and cooled front seats uh, along with a heated steering wheel. And then you also get an eight way or a 10 way power driver's seat with three person memory. So in terms of the luxury and the tech features, VW has really stepped up their game. Uh, and if you guys are looking for something like this, this is definitely one of the more roomier options in the segment. Now, taking a look at the back seat of the Atlas Cross Sport, this is where Volkswagen really took advantage of the fact that they could remove the third row because in terms of the second row legroom, this is among the biggest in the class, especially if you're looking at something like the Toyota Venza. Volkswagen says you have a little over 40 and a half inches of legroom back here. 40 and a half actually makes this around three inches uh, larger, more spacious versus the three row Atlas in the second row. So this is a ton of space. As you can see, there's a, a bench here. You cannot get captain's chairs because this vehicle again uh, seats five people. Uh, but for somebody my height, you can see the headroom space, I will say is a little bit compromised because of the lower roof line and the sunroof, but I'm okay. If you're over six feet, your head might be touching the ceiling. In terms of materials, you can see soft touch injection molded plastic. You have these manual rear sunshades, which is nice. You have more of that copper fiber trim, leather padding over here, uh, which is nice. You have storage cubbies in each of the front seats, a completely, almost a completely flat floor here. VW does give you three level heated seats, but not your own set of climate controls. You do have rear seat vents, but they took away the three zone climate control, which I kind of think they should have just kept. Uh, you have two more USB-C charging ports and a power outlet. I do wish that VW offered or put in the little storage cubby here for your smartphone. You can find that in something like the new Volkswagen ID4. If you fold down this right here, you can see there's an armrest uh, that gives you two cup holders as well. The seats, they do offer a recline function, so you can pull the lever here. It reclines actually a pretty good amount, but if you're hoping it slides forward, sadly it does not. But overall, if you guys want a big back seat in the mid-size segment, this is definitely among the best out there. So kicking off the driving scene in the 2024 Atlas Cross Sport. Remember, this vehicle may have a sport in the name, but it's not necessarily a sporty vehicle to drive, but we just tested a zero to 60 time of 7.58 seconds, which is not bad. It's actually about a half a second or 0.4 seconds faster versus the three row Atlas that we actually just hopped out of. Um, and this vehicle with its new two liter turbocharged engine and eight speed automatic transmission delivers around 34 more horsepower versus the old two liter turbo and about seven even less horsepower than the old V6. But despite the decrease in power, this does have about 15% uh, more torque or 15 more pound feet of torque, I'm sorry, versus the old six cylinder and the old uh, than the old six uh, four cylinder as well. So it's got a good amount of pep. And what I'm noticing the most about this engine is the augmented sound that Volkswagen is now pumping in. If you put your foot down, You can hear a noise is being pumped in through the speakers. You also hear a little bit of the natural four cylinder drone. So it's not the most pleasant sounding engine, but Volkswagen has done a good job here in making this engine not feel turbocharged because as you guys know, with turbo engines, you tend to have turbo lag or you tend to have a peaky nature and you certainly don't get that with the new Atlas Cross Sport or its three row sibling. This vehicle definitely has a nice vibe to it when it comes to acceleration. Now, in terms of their handling dynamics, I have it in its sport setting right now. Uh, it doesn't have adaptive dampers, but we are riding on 21 inch wheels with 45 series tires. And this thing still rides really well. That's kind of always been the beauty about the Atlas Cross Sport is it's a big vehicle, yet it rides really well. It's comfortable, it's quiet. Again, not really sporty in terms of the steering. It's kind of numb, although the, the ratio is quick and it, it changes directions fast. Um, but and in terms of visibility, you can see out of the front and the sides really well. Uh, but really, it's just a nice driving car. That's kind of why the Atlas Cross Sport has been so popular. It has a ton of space in the front and the back and in the cargo area. Obviously, no third row with this model. But when you compare this vehicle to cars like the Nissan or the Toyota Venza, which is a lot smaller on the outside and on the inside, this is definitely nice. This interior is very comparable to a Honda Passport, but unlike the Passport, you know, we actually have some nice modern tech features, although Honda is gonna be working on a new version of the Passport soon. Um, 
And again, if you guys you know like the old six cylinder, sadly, that is now gone. You're gonna have a turbo four cylinder. The eight speed auto also is really smooth in terms of its shifting. I applaud VW for not using a dual clutch, but we could have gotten better acceleration, I'm assuming, if there was a dual clutch in this vehicle, especially since there is no actual dedicated launch control. You can brake torque it, but it doesn't actually have uh, actual launch control. But in terms of comfort, I'm sitting here in these seats, which uh, I love the blue accents in the cross sport that kind of match the uh, exterior, the Kingfisher blue exterior, which is one of my favorite new blue exterior colors. Uh, and uh, with the new infotainment system here, the 12 inch display and the 10.3 inch display, this car definitely has a much more modern feel, though I still don't like the fact that it uses those touch sliders there, which are not illuminated at night. So I'm hoping that Volkswagen will eventually fix that. Compared to the three row uh, Atlas that we just hopped out of, this one also has kind of like an aluminum textured trim as opposed to the wood. So it definitely gives you a more sportier, youthful vibe. The R-Line also has this kind of flat bottom steering wheel, which feels really nice in your hands. Um, but overall, it's definitely a nice driving vehicle. It's quiet, it's comfortable. I think for those of you who are looking for, or who like the space of the three row, but you don't need the three, the actual you know, third row for the seven passenger seating capacity, you're gonna kinda, kinda get into this model and get the extra space that you're looking for uh, and the extra practicality compared to something like uh, a Tiguan, for example. Uh, the Crossport in general has always been kind of like a two to one. The, the three row has always outsold this vehicle two to one, but I think with this revised version, uh, Volkswagen is definitely gonna be having more people interested in this model. Um, but in terms of the fuel efficiency, I'll have to wait until we get one back home to test for a full week where we can see if this vehicle is actually gonna be better. Volkswagen says 1925 for this model, which is about two MPG better versus the old model. Thankfully, this also runs on regular gas, so you don't have to put premium in it. But overall, I really like the way this car drives. Do I wish it was sportier? Yes. Um, do I wish it was quicker? Absolutely. But again, there's a reason why Volkswagen kind of holds this car back uh, because if they did make this as fast, for example, as the Audi Q8, which is kind of like uh, the luxury version of this vehicle, although they don't technically share the same platform. This is, remember, an MQB architecture. I just wish that for this cross sport, Volkswagen had kind of tuned the dial a little bit more toward the sportier end. I think for the comfort end, it's at a right position for the type of buyer who looks in this class of vehicle. But if you want something sportier, there's definitely other options out there. Although in this segment, a lot of the other options in the mid-sized non-three-row class, they're kind of getting a little bit fewer and far between because a lot of them are getting older. So the VW Atlas Crossport is definitely one of the freshest entries in this uh, particular category. So every year, Volkswagen tends to sell between 15 to 25,000 Atlas Crossports in America. So this represents a nice, healthy chunk of sales. And it's one of the reasons why Volkswagen has transitioned from being the people's car to being the people's SUV, because this is a very popular choice among consumers. So after spending the day driving the revised 2024 Atlas Crossport, I have to say, if you're looking for a midsize SUV and you don't need a third row, this should make it to the very top of your list. As you guys saw, it has a ton of space in the front seat, in the back seat, and in the cargo area. The new Paratrain also has significantly improved the drivability. Zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds is nothing to write home about, but it should have plenty of power for most people. The eight-speed automatic is smooth. The engine delivers a nice power band that doesn't feel peaky. It doesn't feel turbocharged. It feels like a naturally aspirated V6. And in terms of the handling, while I do wish that VW had made this car more sporty, I think the ride quality and the competent handling should agree with most buyers in this class. Now, if you are looking to get your hands on the Atlas Cross Sport, these are heading to dealerships as we speak, probably by next month you should be seeing them at your local Volkswagen showroom. And pricing is gonna start at just over $36,700. That represents around a $2,500 increase versus the pre-refresh model, the 2023 model. That price increase is justified given the fact that VW has significantly increased the standard equipment list, like those heated and cooled ventilated seats, the big 12 inch display. This particular one that I'm showing you here is the fully loaded version of the Atlas Crossboard. It's gonna start at around 51,500. When you add in the destination charge, you're looking at around 52, dollars $53,000. That is obviously a lot of money. However, if you compare this car to some luxury offerings, it's probably around twenty dollars to $30,000 less expensive. If you compare it to something like the Toyota Venza, this model is more expensive, but it's priced along the same lines as something like a Ford Edge ST. Although, as you guys know, the Edge is definitely getting on there in the, in the years. Ford is most likely going to redesign that vehicle. And of course, there's also the Nissan Murano, which is also a really old choice as well. So really, in the midsize 
a crossover segment with two rows. This is one of the freshest offerings out there and it's really just an electrified powertrain away for me from being a class leader. But if you guys don't care about having a hybrid option, this is definitely going to be one of the best and freshest entries in the segment. With all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the fully revised 2024 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.